It felt good. I think I was just more overwhelmed with the feeling of finally being back out there. Um, of course, we're a little sore after the game, first time uh, having some action in like three weeks, but um, just it, it just felt really good being back out there competing with the guys. JT, were you surprised by the QB change and just your overall reaction to it? Uh, yeah, of course I was surprised, um, but just got to understand this is this is a tough business, so there's going to be a, a lot of adversity. Everyone, each and every single individual is going to face adversity, but at the end of the day, it's it's the greatest team sport. So how can we come together as a team in order to refocus in on the task at hand, which is going in and being a, a really good Minnesota? Any advice for AR? Yeah, just let them know. Listen, you got to stay the course. You got to be able to modify your routine when where need be, but continue to come in and be a professional each and every single day, each and every single week. Um, and, and that's going to get you far in this business. What are the challenges that Minnesota's defense presents because of the way they like to disguise, the way they like to pressure the front? They got a lot of different looks. Um, we're going to have to be on our alignment and assignment. I, I think that's going to be a big key for us to try to have your eyes a lot of different places um, and, and not to bring anything, you know, you, super unique, but they want to test you in your protection. So we got to make sure we're on our alignment and assignment because uh, they're going to test it. How does that maybe play to the uh, experience of this offense, having as many veteran guys as you do to lean on to adapt for that? Nothing beats experience. So just being able to be with the same group of guys for you know a period of time, understanding you know we're we're familiar um, with the looks, but just knowing hey we're kind of all on the same page. We know it's going to be a loud environment, probably really going to be hard to hear. So just being able to have that experience and those reps together is going to really help us with our communication. This marks the second half of the season, kind of kicking things off. Everything is still in front of you. How much do you guys have to take advantage of the opportunity you have at hand? on Sunday night. You must. You must take advantage of it. There's no better opportunity. You got a Sunday night primetime game, only game on in town. I mean, what better opportunity do you have to, to start the second half of the season than that? Do you get a little bit more juice for Sunday nights? Uh, you always do. I mean, it's you, that's what you watch growing up, Sunday, Monday night football, you know, coming on the TV, guys saying their school. So it, it, it definitely is something special. JT, how do you stay confident in the direction of the team when the most important position it keeps changing year to year? You try to know that you know, there's a lot of other pieces. That is a big piece, but there's a lot of other pieces. And I think one of our biggest thing is that we've all, like Lara just mentioned, we have all been together for some time. So being able to have that continuity going into a tough environment is going to be critical for us. JT, how does the run game change without Lance Evans next year? Number one, me and the offensive line and the rest of the running backs, we got to make sure we're on our P's and Q's. Running backs got to make sure we're doing a good job bringing these defenders to blocks. And we already know the offensive line is going to fight, claw, straps, and strain every single play to make sure that they're on our guy. So we just got to make sure we're all on the same page so that we can start creasing these runs and being efficient. Do you lose that threat without his legs next year? Uh, well, of course, that's something special that he brings, but you got to also look at what Joe brings. Joe brings, uh, you know, elite experience. So uh, it's two different ends of the spectrum. So we just got to find a way to figure out what puts us in the best position and how we can go out there and execute it and get the job done no matter what. How do you describe what that Minnesota environment can be like when you go in as an opposing offense? It, it my first time there, it was definitely loud. Um, you just got to understand, you got to have poise kind of for the noise. That's kind of what we say is just being able to, to block out all that noise, block out the crowd, block everything out, understand what is your assignment, where do you have to be, and how do you have to execute it? Um, because a lot of times a hostile environment can can throw guys off, so you got to stay focused. That had to be a frustrating second half for you watching that game, yep. right? You, you got knocked out of that, didn't you? Yeah. The, the Minnesota game 2022. Oh, 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 okay, yeah. okay, okay, yes. Yeah, yeah. I like, got knocked out. Watching the second half, that had to be a frustrating experience for you. How do you approach that, I guess, mindset going back this time? Oh, well, that was two years ago. You never want that to happen, but that was two years ago. We got to lock into this Minnesota team this year in 2024 because the 2024 Colts have to come and bring their end game. Will it be weird to see Gilly on the other side? Yeah. You know, that, those type players, one, I'm thankful that he was with us in the locker room, um, just being able to be a teammate to an all-time great like that. Um, but it's going to be a little difficult. I'm glad I don't have to face him every single snap, so I'm sure our receivers uh, have their work cut out for him. What is the biggest thing you took away from sharing a locker room with him? Really his process and his routine. Same thing every single day, every single week, every single day of the week. Whatever he had that day, he did it week after week after week. And, you know, just kind of talking to me and saying, this is what it's like to be a true professional is you have to stay. Don't deviate from your routine because that's what's going to have have you have longevity in the league, but also stay productive in the league. When he gets his uh, next opportunity that – He's going to do well. And, uh, I still think that there was a lot of things good he did when uh, playing. He did a great job uh, escaping pressure, evading sacks, um, 
and he also had some some good throws too. Um, so, uh, yeah. Were you surprised by the decision at all? Uh, yeah, I was surprised. How does the game plan change with different quarterbacks? Um, you what know, that running ability, obviously. Uh, they put more pressure yeah. on you guys. Uh, I, w- I wouldn't say uh, more pressure. It's just like um, a little different because. AR is like an incredible athlete, um, and but you know we've had Joe in that quarterback uh, for a couple games this year, and he's done a great job. And uh, yeah, so. how, do you, how do you think Anthony? I don't know how much you've talked to him since, but how do you think he's kind of handling this? So he's been through a lot in just you know a year and a half. Right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, how he's handling it, um, I think the best he can uh, he's coming to work every day and getting here early and grinding even harder um, which you know being a teammate you love to see that out of him so. so you've been through a lot of changes at quarterback from your time here how do you feel about the direction of the team when the quarterback keeps changing um you know whoever's back there you, the job stays the same for us uh we got to protect who, whoever's back there. And, um, yeah, I, I still think uh, the direction of the team is the same. Go out there, try to win games, do your best, and try to play winning football. Keith had a couple we'll see what, what, uh, Bernie, we'll see what Bernie's status is, but what do you guys have to do special extra, if anything, if a, if a rookie or someone else was out there? Um, you know, yeah, I, I think uh, just communicate a little bit more because uh, Matt, as a rookie, obviously doesn't have the experience that Bernie does and the chemistry that Bernie and I have because we've played so many games together. I think that's the biggest thing. And that matters, doesn't it? I mean, For sure. Are you expecting or anticipating or trusting? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that That's huge for our position, like just knowing where the guy next to you is going to be on every play and how we're going to um, – do our job by passing off games and on our double teams. So, so you've had, uh, I guess, more pre-snap penalties than obviously normal throughout your career. What do you think the issue is, and how do you clean it up? Uh, just focus, lock in. Um, I, I mean, I found out pretty much the same time as everybody else. Uh, now I had a chance to, uh, you know, obviously talk with Shane. Me and Shane usually catch up on Tuesdays just about, um, you know, where the team is and where we're going. Um, but yeah, I pretty much found out the same way everybody else did. Social media. Uh, yeah, I guess. But you know, I don't really play offense, so it's not really my. Have goal. you been a, a big supporter of Anthony? Um, and I'm sure you probably still are. But how do you help him through this as one of the captains? Um, I mean, the reality of the situation is, you know, it's just uh, unfortunately it's a part of his journey, it's a part of his process. Um, you know, I called him and, and talked with him yesterday um, when the news came out and whatever. And obviously, I know he's really banged up about it, but, um, you know, he's a professional um, and, you know, he's a great teammate. So I know he's going to still continue to go and do everything he do to help his team win. Um, you know, all I could really do is just try to give him, uh, you know, maybe whatever examples or life that I ex- um, experiences that I've experienced or seen somebody else go through that I've seen him, you know, grow through. Um, obviously, it's tough for him being in that situation as a young player, but. Um, I told him just you got to use this uh, as an opportunity to continue to grow and get better. I know everybody feels like they they leaving you. Just keep keep track of who's leaving you and, and, and use it as fuel. Yeah, See, the, I know a lot of times that he was he was Pippen said he was shocked because mm-hmm. he heard the news. Um, give me your give me your reaction when you first found out. How surprised were you by the news? Um, man, I mean, I was. I was thrown off a little bit, you know, I, obviously, like I said, you know, you just kind of, it's like a bunch of different things kind of coming on your phone at the same time. So it's just like, wow, uh, I mean, it's tough. Um, but, you know, at the same time, you know, that's the decision that they made and, you know, we're going to support everybody. We're going to support whoever we got, uh, got on the center. Um, but it was tough. You know, I can understand where, a little bit where he's coming from. You know, a lot of times when uh, maybe a, a player loses the confidence of the locker room, sometimes these things factor into it. I don't sense that any of that happens from your comments and from other guys. Uh, it seems, were guys still behind AR as far as you can tell? Oh, 100%. Yeah. I mean, I still believe, you know, he the future of this team. I know that sounds crazy to everybody right now, but that's something I still full heartedly believe, um, that he's the future of the Indianapolis Colts. 
um, it is tough. I wouldn't say that he lost a locker room at all. I mean, look, he's a young player that was making mistakes and that we knew we had to grow with him, you know what I mean, grow through it with him. So uh, the things that, you know, he was, you know, struggling with or trying to work on at the time was things that we, you know, we all understood, especially from a defensive side of the ball. Um, so I would never say it was uh, a loss of confidence um, because we understood there was going to be highs and lows. Um, with everything, you know, as he, you know, grew into the role as the face of the franchise. See, what was your reaction with him, the tap out the one play, and were you surprised that there had been such a, you know, backlash from that? Um, I'm not surprised that uh, the backlash is is out based off of like, you know, you know, saying that in post game and, and you know, it's such a big game. Um, you know, when I, I was standing right there when you know he came out. Uh, you know, I know he had been dealing with, a, you know, a handful of things. Um, and so I know he's, you know, I figured he just needed to get checked out and figure it out. Obviously, Joe went in there and we, we got points and a critical point in the game. So um, I felt like that was all that really matters. Once he was back up, I was like, all right, cool. Um, but, you know, I, I just, I know how the, how the business is and I've seen it happen. So I, I get it. When you lose a big game, you know, things like that are extremely mag magnified and um, just a tough situation for a young player. Zaire, when it comes to, um, just again, from a cap team captain standpoint, how unified do you think this locker room is after going through a transition like this at this point in the season? I mean, I don't think, you know, our locker room is wavering. Um, you know, I feel like it's, uh, you know, we had 500 in the midpoint of our season. Um, and, you know, no way to shake back better than Sunday night. You know, we got a great opportunity in front of us against a talented Minnesota team. And it's a chance to show, the, you know, uh, the world and you know the rest of the league, you know who we are and who we stand for. I wouldn't say anybody is shaking um, or by by anything. I think it's just like I said, it's adversity that comes through with the season. Um, we've been through it before. We're gonna go through it as we're gonna continue to go through it. Um, we just as we can st continue to stay together. Um, you know we're gonna continue to get better throughout the season. It is, it is prime time. It is prime time on Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, give me your thoughts on that. Just getting that opportunity to Lights, national television. Man, uh, look, there's no better way to get the shake back than on primetime Sunday night. Uh, definitely looking forward to it. Uh, we got a lot of bad mojo to shake off from the last time we was in Minnesota, but um, <laughs> nah, I mean, look, man, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to get to it. Uh, it's like, like I said, it's a talented team. They got a talented group on the offensive side of the ball, so we got our hands full. But I think we'll be ready for the challenge. It's very different circumstances, obviously, but you have been in that spot of being a backup who wanted to get on the field. Is there a way to relate to Anthony on some level with that? Is there any advice you can maybe pass to him about just what it's like to handle some of that? Um, well, the honest truth uh, is, you know, I was a starter when I my rookie year. And to be 100% honest, I wasn't uh, – this is not an Anthony thing, but me personally, my rookie year, I don't think I took it as serious as I should have taken it at the time, and I lost my spot because of that. Uh, and it took me four years to get another opportunity. Um, now, I don't think his situation is going to be that way. Uh, you know, obviously, we two different players, two different situations. But, um, you know, I did share him a little bit about my journey and my story and, you know, just different things that I realized I had to come to grips with about myself to become a better player. So um, right, wrong, or indifferent, um, I think he'll take this opportunity to become a better player and a better teammate. Listen, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. Um, I'm just going to go out there and, and play my game and, and do the best I can to, you know, elevate everybody and give them confidence and, and uh, you know, just do my thing like I have. You know, so I've already played a couple games this, this year, so um, I think everybody knows uh, what to expect and we can just roll right into it. Shane said that this is not just one game. You're the quarterback moving forward. You're a veteran. You've been here, obviously played the game for a long time. What does that do for you, you know, mentally and just your confidence moving forward knowing that you are the guy now? Well, listen, it's tough unless you've been through the situation. I want to say it's obvious, but it, 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 it's probably tough to realize, but it is a lot easier to prepare when, when you know you're the guy. And um, even though you try to keep everything the same when, you're, when, you, when you could be coming off the bench, um, just mindset-wise, um, there's something that changes just that little bit. And, um, you know, I, I think in terms of playing consistently after this, it's just kind of, I think it just gives everybody clarity, uh, you know, in the building and, you know, on, and, and, and the guys on the team that they know what to expect. And you can kind of jump, um, 
you know, you can you can just dive in and 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 know what you're getting into. Joe, you know, obviously you're, you're a pro. And you've been through you know delicate situations before, but just how, how do you kind of navigate something like this? An Anthony Young quarterback probably going through this for the first time. Yeah, listen, you just come. In, everybody um, has the same goal when they come in this building, which is mm -hmm. to win football games. Um, so so it, it stays the same. Um, listen, I, I think the thing we got to remember here is Anthony's really young. Um, I think it would have been. I know that when I was that young, there's no chance that I would have been able to have the perspective and just the right head on my shoulders to, 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 to handle it and take it the right way. But now, being, you know, this my 17th year, I do have that perspective. Um, so if you can kind of give any of that to him in terms of just, this doesn't have to be a negative thing. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of positives on his end that can come from this. Uh, like I said, he's very young with a bright future. And there's plenty of guys that come into this league and don't play right away. Now, I know this is a little bit different because it feels like you're getting something taken away from you. And like I said, what, if I was as young as he was, there's no chance I would have taken it the right way right off the bat. But I do really believe there's a lot of positives. I mean, look, there's a bunch of guys around the league that haven't played uh, right as they come in the league, where have gotten second or third chances as they've kind of matured and, and, and grown a little bit. And I think there's a lot of advantages of being able to remove yourself a little bit and watch watch from a distance and learn and do those things. And I, I think, you know, I think that's probably not to like talk for the Colts and Shane, but y you would think that's part of the thought process of at least a little bit is, is, is to try to help him out. How's how similar or different is this to the challenge last year in Cleveland, and how did that maybe, I don't know, add to your experience to handle something like this? Listen, I, ultimately, when I'm preparing to start football games, that is where I feel most comfortable, um, even though I haven't, like, consistently done that for the last five years, <coughs> uh, four or five years. It is where I feel most comfortable. Uh, doing the other is kind of what I have, I've had to get used to. So I think just from a, as a general statement, like this is where I feel at home. Um, I think last is, last year's situation is always going to be a little bit unique. I mean, this year at least, I, you know, listen, I've been a part of this football team since the spring, um, and I've been able to go out there and practice and be a part of it and and do all those things. And I, so I think there's a little bit of a different uh, different dynamic. Have you spoken to Anthony at all, or if if you haven't, like, what would you I guess say to him or give him space? Yeah, just give him space. Listen, you, 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 I, th I think you, you treat it like a normal day, just like we normally would. And, uh, you know, uh, I think as this goes on, then everybody will gain a little bit of a different perspective on it and, and be able to grow from it in some way. How motivated are you to, you know, lead this team and get this team to the playoffs? Oh, listen, I, I'm fired up, man. Uh, uh, anytime you get a chance to play football in this league, you, you have to – you know, count count yourself as blessed, and you know I, I really feel very fortunate to to be with this team and be in this situation, and I'm excited to get it done. Joe, can you speak to the difference in reps you would get as a backup versus a starter? I know you've mentioned that. Before. Yeah, man, this is the NFL. You don't get any reps when you're the backup. Yeah, you get zero. Mm -hmm. uh, you get scout team reps, which is fun. Uh, it is it's a lot of fun, but in terms of real reps and calling plays, that you know you go from zero to a hundred. So. Uh, it can definitely benefit. Did you have any conversations with him about the tap out? And do you think that had anything to do with this decision? I don't, and I didn't. Listen, I mean, he was in the heat of the, you know, heat of the moment in the game, and um, I, I think that's a situation that he looks back on and he'll grow from as well. But I, I don't think there was anything malicious in that. You know, it, it just kind of one of those things that 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 he'll grow from. Being that this isn't a temporary move, how much extra work do you think it'll take for? you and Shane to kind of implement the stuff that you really like to do moving forward. That's one of those conversations where you just got to go out and play well and then everybody just thinks you do it right away. Because that, that, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's honestly just a talking point, like yeah. that if you're not playing well, oh, well, it's going to take it two, it's going to take two weeks. And if you do play well, then it just goes away. How did you do that so quickly? Uh, so I think it's just kind of up to us to go play our game and not really worry about that. Joe, the one last thing on, on the tap out, I mean, it, it generated like a lot of conversation and, and debate. Uh, in the building, w would you say it was a different reception than that? It doesn't sound I, like for, for you it was, at least. I didn't 
realize that it was generating all that because you know you kind of come in here and you're in your own world and you don't pay attention to all that and in the building it felt like a normal monday normal mm -hmm. tuesday so joe you were the franchise quarterback in baltimore um got, got supplanted obviously you're in this spot now to start again i guess you've been through it I, how does anthony i guess maybe not look at this like the end I know you yeah I, I i touched on that early like i said it's tough you know, until you go through it yourself. I mean, you can listen to other people and try to see their perspective and, 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 and have that help you throughout this process. But until you go through it on your own and really come out of that on the other side, it's not until then do you, that you really see that. So, you know, ho hopefully he hears this and I, I think he's got, a, like I said, there's positives that can come from this. You, you grow in so many ways from little things like this where, that you think, are setbacks, but really their growth opportunities are gonna propel you forward. So listen, people can tell people that all day and it, it never seems to really hit home until you just go through something like that yourself. Like that's why doing hard things, like if you listen to people, do hard things. It'll help you grow in some way. You don't necessarily know how and why, but you do hard things, you put yourself in those situations and you grow. Well, guess what? The NFL is a really hard business and really hard decisions have to be made. And then as players and coaches, you have to go through those things and you're kind of on your own to a certain to, to a certain, you know, extent. And the only thing that can come out of that is growth. You will grow in some way and become better because of it. So what do you think right. AR can? Right. Last one. Yeah. What do you think AR can just learn from you? Because that's what Shane was saying. He can sit back, learn from a veteran who's been at a high level. What can he learn from you? Listen, I think most people like having kids. Um, they learn by what they see. You, they learn from example. Um, and sometimes, when you have kids, you can point to bad examples and say, "Don't do that." But there's a lot of times also where you can just look at somebody that's doing things the right way and say, look at that. And I think there, there'll be things that you can pick up on both ways, you know, and, uh, but ultimately I think that's the thing that I can do is just go operate like I know how to operate. And you kind of just get that from being around guys that do it, you know, a certain way. Wow. Um, yeah, I mean, I was a little surprised. Uh, Shane gave me a heads up, um, so uh, I respect him for doing that. It was, it was a good, good courtesy call, I guess. Uh, always tough though when you make a change in season like that. Um, you feel for both sides, right? I mean, it's, it puts kind of both guys in a little weird position. You know, they're they're um, I've certainly learned from each other throughout you know the year. Um, we're closely together, and, and I'm sure they've bounced a lot of ideas off each other for the last you know five six months. And then to take one guy out, put another guy in, it's probably a little bit tough, so I feel for those guys in that regard. But um, I think you know, now that it's been 48 hours or so since that news is broken, I think that they've both done a great job of uh, professionalism. I think just, that, that was never a question. Um, I think AR has handled it about as, about as well as you could. And uh, but you know we got a, a big test on tonight, so just trying to uh, avoid the you know moving past it. You know I mean, certainly you, you want to hype him up, and um, you know anytime you see AR, I mean he's cares deeply about what he does and the guys in the locker room. So um, it's not something you just brush off, but also you know, got a game to play Sunday. Ryan, uh, just listening to Shane uh, kind of explain his rationale. I mean, obviously there are things on the field that Anthony can do better. But Shane also talked about just the preparation and off-the-field stuff that goes into that job. How Can you, from your experience, kind of tell us just how, how hard it is for a young quarterback to take that on and understand the complexity of that part of the job? Yeah, I mean, I, I can't speak for the quarterback position entirely. Yeah. I mean, I probably worked the closely as closely as anybody does with them. So yeah. um, I can only tell you that you know that that job requires that even if it's a Tuesday off, that you're in here on Tuesday, um, because that that game plan ultimately falls on you. I mean, is you see, I mean, you see the, the the call sheets those coaches have, right? I mean, there could be you know 120, 200 plays on there, right? And you have to know the checks, the different looks on each of those, and so um, that's just part of the job. The other part is the cadences. It's the evaluation of um, defenses, um, the leadership qualities that you also have to partake in um, in the huddle, um, and I'm speaking in generalities on all those. I mean, he, he's yeah. done, he's, he's improved every day in that. Um, I think it's just, it's still, you know, for anybody, it's a big task. I mean, it was the same task for me. I mean, I came in the league when Andrew had already been established, so it was a little bit easier for me, but um, probably a 
probably better answer your question, Dr. Bank. Ryan, is there a level of frustration for you and that here we are revolving the door one more time in that position? I mean, I'd be lying too if I said no. I mean, it's you know, 12 guys, so I can name them all. Good friends with all of them. Um, it's just kind of the reality, right? I mean, I think there's things in life I've learned is that I can't control every outcome. I can control what I have this day, and if I, you know, if I'm here every single day doing my best, I feel like then I can hang my hat on that. And um, in some ways, it's a blessing, right? I think I get to learn a lot from these different quarterbacks and see um, each of them for who they are. But I'm, I, yeah, I'd be lying if I didn't say I'd like to have a guy from for the first time I like, walked in the door to the last time I left, but um, not reality right now. So. Ryan, you say, I guess, how do you feel about the direction of the team when the most important thing is what keeps changing? Yeah, I mean, look, Shane sits in that office for, for a reason. He's got his own office. I got a locker I'm sharing with 60 some other guys, right? So he makes the he makes those calls, him and Chris alone. Um, not necessarily a job I envy sometimes. Um, certainly, I think that you know, those decisions are pretty tough to make. Um, like I said before, I mean, at the end of the day, like, I've been through this multiple times. Um, every situation's been a little bit different, but you know, one thing I've learned is like, the game goes on. Like, Sunday at 7.30 Central, like, that ball's gonna get kicked off. Um, and so, how do I do my job the best that I can so whoever back there feels the most comfortable, whether that's was AR or is Joe or you know the other nine quarterbacks I played with along my time? Um, I can only control what I can do. Does it make any difference to you that this was announced early in the week rather than having a bunch of noise of like who's going to start all week and distractions at least on the outside? I mean, yeah, I think it's it's a smart play to not do it on Thursday, do it on Monday. So I mean, I think it's you know everybody's just, you know, Twitter will eventually go back to the other whatever they're talking about election time, whatever. So um, you know, but for us, it's you know, the Vikings got a great defense, you know, so we got to be ready for them, too. What have you seen from the run defense? You see that it's one of the best in the league. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're a little unorthodox as compared to some of the teams that we've played so far. Um, you know, everybody gets, you know, and they, they do blitz uh, a good amount, uh, but a lot of it is just, they just play well together. They have good players up front. Uh, Harrison Smith's been running that show for a long time now. Um, they're just, you know, they're, they're a little bit unorthodox in the way that a lot of defenses are shifting to in the NFL, but they play... Uh, they play hard, they create negative plays, they get off the quarterback. So um, for us, another big test. I mean, I think it's just like every week. I mean, they need one defense in the league that doesn't have a good front seven and play your line. So and they're, they're a great front seven. But to be back in prime time um, in Minnesota is a great feeling. Played there my rookie year. We won big game in December. Um, and then to try to play meaningful football in November, December is what you want to do. Yeah, I was going to say there is another game that, that you played there. Is that one that you try to put out of your mind? I mean, I tried to erase the entire 22 season, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember much of it. How many movies are there? Yeah. 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 Uh, Ryan, uh, we talked on Monday about the, the tap out play. It's on this general line of mm -hmm. conversation. Do you think that that factored into this decision? I mean, I, I feel like everything factors in, right? I mean, it's it's every single little detail of your game, of who you are. Um, I mean, I don't think that there's anything that they don't keep on the table or keep track of in the NFL. I mean, you're accountable for everything you do, so. Uh, if Burton can't go on Sunday, um, how do you help out You know, whoever's in there at left tackle? I mean, I think the way you've seen it, I mean, it's Tanner filled in um, when I missed two games. Um, Tuck has now been, you know, three games starting at right guard. Um, and then Matt will get to start this week, right? I mean, I think it's – those are three rookies. I mean, I looked at back at the 2016 game. We also started three rookies that game too. So, like, yes, everybody talks about being a rookie in this league and having – you know, growing times. Um, sometimes when you play offensive line, it's not always that easy, right? Like you got to play five as one. I think that's what makes our room so special. I've been talking about that since you know April. Is we can only keep you know nine guys on active roster. Like you know, that's a that's a minimal amount for the amount of injuries sometimes you partake in an offensive line. And so those guys got to be ready. They've been ready and they will be ready. So um, there's nothing you change. You hold them to the expectation that you'd help Bernard too or whoever else goes injured. Um, and you just bring them along with you, right? I mean, that's why we're, I feel like we're a band of brothers for a reason, because we have to truly rely on each other to do our job every single day, and I uh, have no doubt we'll be ready on Sunday. You guys say last week, you usually don't have a lot of pre snap stuff. You guys did have a few in Houston. Do you attribute that to anything? Uh, like the penalties? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we just got to lock in. I think that sometimes it's, you know, yeah, I think it's working through things here and there. Hey, like, I heard this, but really it was this. Uh, we'll, we'll have a lot of loud, you know, crowd noise today. Working through that, um, we know we got to eliminate pre-snap penalties and you know uh, hurting us, hurting ourselves in big plays. So, um, no, just nothing more than just locking in. Is some of that a young quarterback working through cadence? 
Yeah, I mean, you're on the road, you're playing, and you're on silent gate this whole time. So I think it's um, it's a lot of factors that go into it. But I think a lot of it's just like, hey, you know, I, I thought I heard this. Did you hear the kill call? Whatever it is. So, I mean, I think probably reading a little more into it.